How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much once again for checking out another video right here at NextGenMD. Now if you missed my last video, some of you are going to be super confused. You're like, Gianluca, what is going on with the mustache? Okay, what's going on with your face over here? Um, what I'm doing right now is I am growing the best mustache possible that I can in order to raise awareness, raise money, raise support for the Movember charity and for men's health. Okay, so that's what that's all about. But moving on to today's video, I have a very simple answer for a lot of you looking for this answer to a very complicated question and that is what MCAT score do you need in order to get into a med school that you want to get into? So I already made some videos in the past talking about what the MCAT is, I broke the entire thing down, then I also made another one about how you should study in order to get an amazing score on the MCAT, but I remember being in this position a few years ago when I was looking to get into medical school and I was signing up for the MCAT test and I just wanted to know what score do I need in order to get into the school that I want to get into, I wanted to get into medical school. Uh, and what I tried my hardest to do is I did my research, I looked up a whole bunch of different medical schools in the States, in Canada, in the Caribbean. Uh, and, and try to come up with real answers as to what the average MCAT scores are for these schools. Now I did the research on my spare time, whatever spare time I have left now that I'm doing so much homework, and I think that these are going to be the most conclusive, up-to-date statistics that I could find. But one thing that you need to keep in mind when we're talking about what score you need to get on the MCAT in order to get in, is that the MCAT test, uh, the big score that you get in total, and then even the four different categories, only makes up one section of your overall medical school application. Now this section is going to be your academic excellence. What have you shown the admissions committee in terms of your ability to excel academically? Now in this category we're also going to have things like the GPA that you achieved in your undergrad uh, and then any other things that you've done in terms of academics. Now because the uh, medical school application is broken down to all of these different sections. What this video means for you is that assuming the rest of your application is totally average and compared to the rest of the applicant pool, all you need to do is theoretically achieve this MCAT score or higher in order to get into one of the schools that we're going to talk about here today. Oh, and one more thing before we get started. Always remember that when we're talking MCAT scores and competitive MCAT scores, it is always more beneficial to have a score that is evenly distributed across the four sections versus one that's skewed in only one category. And the reason is, is because if we have an even score, we are showing the admissions committee that we have been well-rounded applicants in terms of what we've studied. We've gathered knowledge in all of the different sections versus someone who's only studied very hard or they're just uh, naturally inclined to do better in the biology section Section and maybe did a lot worse in the chemistry section. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the Canadian schools. What you need to know about medical schools uh, here in Canada in terms of how they regard the MCAT is that it's going to vary uh, across all of the different medical schools here. Now, there are 17 different medical schools in all of Canada and they're scattered across all of the different provinces. Now, some of them are going to look at the MCAT score as a composite. Some of them are going to look at only particular categories and then some of them made my job really easy for me because they actually don't look at the MCAT score at all. Now also, the average scores that I'm about to put up on the screen here um, are going to be scores that the applicants applying from within their own particular province are going to need. Now basically what this demonstrates is that if you are an out of province applicant applying to a school that's in another province, you have to be much more competitive in order to get a seat in that school versus if you were an in province applicant. So now, no more waiting, let's go ahead and put the numbers up on the board. If you want to go ahead and get into the University of Alberta, their average medical school, uh, school MCAT score was a 513. At the University of Calgary, it was a 512. At UBC in British Columbia, it was a 514. At U of Manitoba, uh, we also see it was a 514. At the Memorial Medical School in uh, Newfoundland, it was a 508. At Dalhousie's, it was 509. Uh, for McMaster, they only look at the car section of the MCAT, and that's going to be a 129. Now, at the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, they actually don't use the MCAT at all in their calculations. Uh, now, for the Queen's Medical Program, there was just no information posted regarding their uh, average MCAT score, but it is factored into their overall consideration. They just don't release that information. Uh, the Western Medical School only looks at the biology section, the chemistry and physics, and the CARS sections. And in each of those three sections, the average successful applicant had a score of a 129. 
Now, at the U of Ottawa, they do not use the NCAT at all. And then for U of T, their uh, score, it's only existing as a threshold, like you just need to meet this score, and then the MCAT isn't actually looked at anymore moving forward. And the minimum uh, MCAT score that you need for U of T was a 499, and that is a 125 in each of the categories, in three of the categories, and then in one of the categories, you're allowed a score of a 124. Now, at the Quebec Medical Schools, that's Laval, McGill, Montreal, and Sherbrooke, um, the MCAT is actually not used in determination of who gets into their school at all. And then finally, as we already talked about, for Saskatchewan, the University of Saskatchewan, you need an MCAT score of a 508 on average. Now these are the most recent statistics that I could find. I'm going to go ahead and directly link all of these um, pieces of information in the comment section below. You could always go through and check with it yourself. But then also, moving forward, because hopefully I have this video up for a while, as the process changes over time and medical school admissions gets harder or gets easier, uh, these numbers are going to change. So you could always go ahead and look at the direct websites themselves in order to find for yourself the most recent statistics possible. Okay, so let's just keep going. Let's blast right through this, right? You guys don't have a lot of time. I got to get back to studying. Let's move on to the Caribbean medical schools now, right? We have four major Caribbean medical schools. Uh, there's a few other ones down there, but the four names that I kept seeing in my own research time and time again were St. George University, uh, Ross University, Sabo University, and AUC. Now, uh, in all four of these schools, um, they will they will take the MCAT. However, at the St. George University, the average MCAT score for a successful applicant was a 497. At AUC, it was a 496. Uh, for the Ross Medical Program, I actually couldn't find any stats listed, and I tried looking for it. Um, but if one of you guys finds some stats, feel free to put it in the comment section below. And then for Saba, they actually didn't have an average MCAT. All I could find is that they strongly encourage that their applicants take the MCAT. Okay, so then it was at this point in my research where I was finally able to get into the American medical schools and their MCAT scores. Uh, so the first thing I did is kind of like what I did for the Canadian medical schools. I looked up how many medical schools there are in the States. And as it turns out, according to Wikipedia, there are somewhere in the area of 176 medical schools in America, in the United States. Now guys, I am super efficient with my time management. I have a schedule that I follow pretty much to the T, okay? But even I don't have that much free time. I can't sit here and go through 170 or whatever medical schools. So what I did was that I broke it down a little bit. Now in uh, the United States, there are two different medical programs. Uh, there is the MD programs, and then also there are the DO programs. Now on average, the MD schools tend to be more competitive in terms of the MCAT score that you need in order to get into an American MD school versus a DO school. Uh, school. And then even within the American MD schools, there are some schools that require super competitive MCAT scores and then some that require less competitive scores. So what we see is just kind of like a spectrum. We have the DO schools uh, in terms of probably the least competitive medical schools. Then we have the uh, mid-range MD schools and then we have some of the higher range uh, medical schools. So starting off, I think I'm gonna start off with the DO schools and then kind of build the suspense as we work up. So starting off with the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine, for their medical program, uh, applicants on average seem to have about a 501 on their MCAT scores. And then uh, for another school that I looked up, uh, v VCOM, uh, it turns out that these applicants tended to have about a 500 on their MCAT scores. So in all of my research, it seems as though a competitive range for the DO schools tend to be from around 499 all the way up to about 503, somewhere in that range. Now then when you move on to the, um, the USMD schools, this is kind of makes up uh, the middle range now, we see that uh, some schools in this range, like Florida State University, you're going to need a 506 on average in order to be competitive for that program. Uh, the University of Mississippi, their program program tended to have an average score of a 504, and then finally uh, the University of Southern Illinois had a 506. So these are going to be the mid-range MD schools in terms of how competitive your MCAT score needs to be. And then finally, on the upper end, okay, I've been building the suspense now towards some of the highest, most outrageous MCAT scores that I've ever seen uh, in terms of averages. We have schools like uh, Harvard University that on average takes students that have an MCAT score of a 519. Okay, so I got a 517, I'm a little salty about that, I'm not gonna lie, but 519 is an amazing MCAT score, okay? I didn't quite make the cut myself. Uh, we have Pritzler's University, 
which is uh, in Chicago, and it's a 518. And then finally, we have Johns Hopkins, which at the time of me doing my research has the highest average medical school uh, admission MCAT that you need. And on average, they take students that have a 522 on their MCAT, and that's an average. American student trying to get into one of the medical schools down there, right? I've laid out uh, kind of like the spectrum from DO and Caribbean schools all the way down to the higher end of the of the MD program spectrum, uh, spectrum when we're talking about the elite IV schools. Uh, and depending on what school you want to target, that's going to be what score you're going to be aiming for on your own MCAT. So always do the research in advance if you can regarding uh, some potential schools that you're interested in and then plan accordingly to shoot for that particular MCAT score. Now guys, one final thing that I want to say, I want to make this very clear. Personally, I do not think that uh, the average MCAT score that the university uh, is, has been accepting in terms of their students is going to directly correlate to the overall quality of the school. Okay, I don't think those two things go together, uh, but these are what the statistics are saying. We have some schools that are super competitive in terms of their MCAT scores, and then some that are less competitive. You could do whatever you want with that own information. I'm just trying to help people out and giving you some realistic expectations for the schools that you're interested in, okay? Okay, so as for myself, I'm currently at uh, the McMaster University for their medical program and I'm currently running late for my next class, okay? I shot this video in my off time uh, and it starts really soon but I'm not too worried because I'm not too far from school. But we did get a little bit of snow last night so I'm gonna try and bustle over there as quickly as possible, okay? Uh, I hope everyone liked this video today. If you did, feel free to like the video, feel free to subscribe, support the mustache in the comment section below, okay? And we'll see everyone next time. So everyone have a great day and take it easy.